They're free from their agony and their pain and their tears. Right. They kept the faith. They ran the race with patience. Hallelujah. They kept the faith. And now there's a crown of righteousness and glory that is waiting to be dispersed to them in that wonderful day of the rewards. Right now we're in the process. But when Jesus comes, the church in heaven, the family of God in heaven, and the family of God on earth is going to come together to be one church again. There is no end to the church. Somebody say amen. amen. This, earth, this world, this earth, and this heaven will end. But... The word of God will never end. And all those who are attached to the word of God will never end. God can't help it. Once you connect it to eternity and it becomes a part of you, you're there. It's alive in you. There's no separating. I want you to know how to conduct yourself in God's only authorized classroom. Diane's been a teacher. She's been a vice principal for instruction. She spent almost 40 years in education. 29 straight years plus 8. No, I'm, I'm total. 39, for whatever. A long time. <laughs> but let me tell you this. She was just telling Stephen and I or somebody back there, she said there was a time that the kid would misbehave in church. Not in church. No, I'm sorry, the school. She, well, I might work in church. But anyways, she would... Make a circle in the blackboard and she said, put your nose on that circle, don't move. You made trouble in my classes, what's going to happen to you? Why is that? There had to be order in the class. Why? Because we're there, somebody help me. That we are in God's authorized classroom here. And Paul's told Timothy, I want you to learn how to conduct yourself in the classroom of God. In the royal family. Teach others how to conduct themselves. So here, the classroom, God's school, God's university, I'd like to say tonight that this is a one-room classroom, school, one-room school. We have elementary kids here tonight. Amen. You <laughs> This is a one-room school. We have anywhere from newborn babes in here in the Lord who are learning how to drink the sincere milk of the Word all the way through to what we would call teachers or doctors of the faith. In the French Bible, it does not use when the Bible speaks about uh, the fivefold ministry in Ephesians chapter 4, and he gave some prophets, apostles, and teachers. So the word teacher is not enseignant. <laughs> in French, which would be a teacher as we know today. If you're a teacher of the Bible, you're a doctor of the Bible. Why is anyone called doctor for any reason? You know, it has nothing to do with know-how. It has to do with curation. It has to do with healing. Somebody help me now. If you're called doctor so-and-so, you are called that because you have a field or a career of life that's supposed to bring healing to whatever you have. It's supposed to bring wellness. It's supposed to bring goodness. It's supposed to bring life. Whether that's medical science or philosophy, the doctrine, I don't care what. And so we who are teachers of the words are of the word of God are doctors. Why 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 does God call us doctors? Well, in French, in curie, everybody say curie. Let me give you this little bit of French here. Watch this now. A bishop or a pastor okay, or an elder all right, in the Catholic Church in the French, C U R E, accepting you. Cuny. Guess what that word is in English? It's spelled the same way. I rest my case. Why did they call him Cuny? is to cure what ails man. The church is called on to cure what ails man. What did Jesus come to do if not to cure our ailments? <laughs> what has separated us from God? He's come to be our doctor. But he has the power to heal physically, emotionally, mentally, relationally, 
every aspect of life. He is the great healer. Can you say amen? He is the great physician. But we are called on to learn how, in verse 15, to conduct ourselves. The church, this is why so many people, what's not? Why, you can probably throw out your own percentile in this package. How many people aren't going to church anymore because they're cured of their problem? No. Because they, kept, they caught a disease in church. No. 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 Ooh, the pastor, that hurts. Oh, yeah. That hurts the church bad. How many people you know already who are going to church because somebody was stupid in class? Yeah. Somebody in church acted up like a fool and disrupted the whole class, brought chaos into the church, and wounded people by their behavior and their talking. Amen. And their gossip. This is malediction. Paul said, be careful with your gossip. You will devour one another if you don't stop this. We are called a God, saints, to bring healing to this world. We're brought to bring a cure to an ailed man. You can't do this by instilling illness and diseases in people. We are called upon to be doctors to a sick and lost and dying world. Just as a matter of testimony, Bogart's across the street, a couple of doors down from the church office there. There's some people who want to have where our church office is right now. And technically, he was over talking with Flora, the mother of Jason, who was the owner of Bogart's, and said, well, what do you think about Pastor Malik's office, you know, in the church and stuff, and, and we may have to move in. She said, don't you, don't you let him leave this plant up. <laughs> he said, What? Don't you let him leave? Don't you put him out of his closet? Why? Because he's a blessing. That man and his church prays for us. Do you think he can go without prayer? <laughs> he's not leaving this closet. You can understand in that very comment she is saying, This church is bringing curation. Right. It's bringing heat to their hearts. <clears throat> Diana's met her and Jason. Others have good people. But she feels healing. She feels good when she sees the pastor. These people that used to be a shell gas station over here. They're Hindus. And you know the Hindus have like 8, 10, 12,000 gods in India. <clears throat> Every time you turn around, you can be a god. You can change your mind what kind of god you want to be and put your sign up and put your shingle up. Man, you're a god. That is just the way they do things. But you know what? That ice you drank from tonight, they gave it to this church. They insist that we get our ice for free from that. They want to give it to us. That's the man that when we had plans on mine, this property next door, he took out of his safe six thousand dollars cash. He said, "Pastor, I want you to have that property next door." He's never stepped foot in this church. Next door to jump to uh, the ends is a little lady. She's from Vietnam, about this tall, probably ninety-five pounds on the way. I go in there. I've been doing it now for years. I hug her neck. I love her in the Lord. I said, "We're praying for you." And now for several years, don't tell her I'm telling you that. She never stepped a foot in this church. My heart, almost every time I stick my head in, I don't go in often because I've been embarrassed. She gives our church cash. She wants to bless our church. Why is that? The guy at the other end, don't tell him I'm telling you that. 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 He said, Pastor, we need you around here. What does all this say? There's a there's a there's an atmosphere, John, of healing. Amen. The wisdom of God.
God heals. What ails? Man. And you are the doctor for your block. You are the doctor. This is the house of God. This is the royal family of God. You're the doctor of your neighborhood. And God only knows right now. There are too many, too many that call themselves Christian by name. But they're dead. Sardis Church that we buried here a couple of weeks ago. You have a name to be alive, but you're dead, Jesus said. You're dead. They have a name. They call themselves Christians. Churches. I call them tinsel churches. It's a sad thing. I'm not condemning anybody. But I've been in ministry now for over 53 years in full-time ministry. This April will be 54 years in full-time ministry. And I'm going to tell you tonight, I know real when I see it. I have been to doctors, you know, 21 years ago when I was electrocuted. Remember, you were there? You were there. Kenny, you were there? When I was electrocuted, I went to, I don't know how many doctors, 14 doctors I went to. I took 16 medications every day to stay alive. Wheelchair, in and out of the hospital. And I'll tell you what, I didn't know anything about medicine, but I can tell what a doctor wanted to see me. Now I've had one more look, and I felt nervous. I said, don't give me somebody else. Yeah. How many know you can tell when a doctor comes to you, when a nurse comes to you? What happened the last few days ago? When was it? We got a minute clinic, something like this. We went to CVS and a minute clinic. And this nurse kept coming out to get the next one. And we both agreed, just looking at her, you can tell. She didn't want to be there. That doctor just said, didn't want to be there. She was sick of being there. She was sick about what she was doing. And I'll tell you what, I wouldn't let her touch me with a 10-foot pole. No, sir, I don't want you getting near me. You have a name, you have a qualification, but your heart is far from what you're doing. That's what happens in many churches today. They have a name, but their hearts are far from God. I want to tell you tonight, I, I, got to, I haven't even got to my message tonight, which is verse 16. Y'all do this to me every time. <laughs> you're the pillar. You're the pillar and the foundation. You're the pillar of the Let me show you something. Let me show you something. I gotta, I gotta show you. Come on. Listen. The Bible tells that Jesus, uh, the church, in if you uh, I don't have time. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 19 and 20. Now watch now. The Bible says that the church is built on the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ, the chief corner. Stum, CCS. So the church and Jesus are equivalent. Church and Jesus, same thing. We're the foundation. We're the basis of a thing called truth. And I'm going to give that to you next week, what that's all about. Because I want to break into verse 16 real good next week. I <laughs> she has learned this doctor real quick. Now, now listen. I, I, I'm going to have to close down. I, 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 uh, Ephesians 2, 20, 2, 19 and 20. Ephesians 2, 19 and 20. But that's going ahead of ourselves. That's next week. Lord, where are you? So are you getting the picture of that? We are doctors here, teachers. And that translates to all and each and every one of us. You are the doctor of your neighborhood. You have the medicine that they need. You, you have the answer and solution to their problems. You have hope. How many know that hope, love, and joy, and peace can bring healing to a sick person all over the day? Yes. The forgiveness of sins. Being reconciled to God. And so the Apostle Paul is saying, where's the wise? Where's the, where's the prudent? Where's, 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 where's the debater? The philosopher of this life. God said, I'm going to destroy it. Are you learning anything tonight, Brother Dave? Yeah. Yeah, 
I think he'll probably, before before this year's out, he'll probably have been able to write a book with what I have preached. But just, but just a note to you, is that right, Chad? <laughs> just, yeah. just on it. You know, I think that I spent probably 40 minutes on sidebar time. Yes. At least 40 minutes on sidebar. Those sidebars are something. <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> I know they're doing class. They know what I'm talking about. <laughs> the sidebars sometimes are are, are needier than uh, than the actual uh, the main course itself. But listen, folks, the Lord is preparing the stage, is setting up the stage for the Gary here at Calvary Community Church for this year to be the year of Jubilee. Amen. God's going to help you regain lost ground in Him. And after you've regained that lost ground, it's going to help you gain new ground, new territory, new heights, new depths in God, new lengths of vision, new broads of under, uh, widths of understanding. You will have the covering of God around you so powerfully. You'll have to look down to see if you're touching the ground. It's going to <laughs> Yeah. It's just really fantastic. So I, I don't know what all I've said here tonight. You'll have to buy the CD or DVD, whatever it is. It's, it's, it's good stuff. I didn't plan. 90% of what I shared here tonight, I have no plan on sharing out. I could just, it, when I was sitting here, we were in worship, Gary, and all of a sudden, God opened a floodgate. That's what you're sharing tonight. It's okay. I had plans, but all well. It's okay with me. I'd rather do what God said. Those are sidebars, you know, when we just open our hearts and just give you what's in our heart from the Holy Spirit. That's called the wisdom of God. That's wisdom. How do I want more wisdom from God, right? So we're not talking about the wisdom of the world. We're not talking about intelligence. We're talking about heart. The condition of your soul. What your demeanor is. What your actions are and reactions. What they are are based on where your heart's condition is. Hmm? So we've got to get healing to the heart this year. The curation, the healing, the well-being of your soul. You know that wonderful hymn that uh, Fanny Crosby wrote 150, 60 years ago? All is well with my soul. It is well with my soul. When peace like a river attendeth my soul. Mm -hmm. Whatever my love that was taught me to say, it is well. It is well with my soul. That's right. It is well with my soul. It is well. It is well with my soul. We won't make first class in the choirs. <laughs> but in God's eyes, see, my mother couldn't sing a whole lot like her sister Vivian. But right now, my mother's joined the Heavenly Choir. Thank you very much. And she's in the first ten rows up front. And she's a professional. Thank you very much. So, you know, it's just the way it is with God. When you start singing praises to Him, it may not leave your mouth sounding like a whole lot. By the time it reaches the heart of God, you are right on pitch. Honey. You are right on pitch. It sounds beautiful in the ears of God. Isn't that wonderful? The Bible says that your praise and singing unto him rises up into his nostrils as a sweet smelling savor aroma. That's pretty good. So if you don't like the sound of your voice, <laughs> that aside, that's just you getting in the way. Just keep praising God. By the time it reaches him, it's sanctified and filtered through beautifully. <laughs> it has been sanitized and sanctified all over here. By the time it reaches God's heart, all of heaven is rejoicing with you. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, what a time we've enjoyed you tonight in your presence. Thank you for the glory of God. Thank you for Jesus tonight, Father. <clears throat> Thank you for the wisdom that has to deal not with, not so much, yes, it deals with the mind because we make choices based on where our heart's condition is. But it begins with the heart. It begin, the wisdom of God begins with a healed heart. And we pray tonight, Lord, if there's anyone that's sick in their soul tonight, watching on DVD or, or, or the, the listening on CD or watching through the internet, 
But if they're here tonight, God, we pray in the name of Jesus. Let healing come to their soul. If there's something broken in their heart, bend it tonight, Father. We can't help others healed unless we're well ourselves. If our soul is sin sick, we pray, Lord, that we'll rectify that at the foot of the cross tonight. And that our relationship with you will be sound, solid, and we will know that Christ is Lord in our hearts. Forgive us, Lord, where we have failed ourselves, our family, and you in our church. So, Father, tonight help us to understand this is God's authorized classroom in the church dispensation, dispensation of the marriage of the church until Jesus comes. And we pray, Lord, that we'll learn how to conduct ourselves here among each other. And we've learned that. So tonight, Father, we give ourselves on the altar of God tonight, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto Him. Heal what needs to be healed. <clears throat> Strengthen what needs to be strengthened, what's been weakened. And help us, Lord, to preserve what we have right now. And gain more ground, lost ground. Starting in the very first week of this month, this year. Oh God, tonight, help us to regain lost ground. So that we can gain more ground before the end is <coughs> end. Jesus name. Surely he bore our sorrows only by his stripes we are here. How many believe it? Amen. He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. Surely he bore our sorrows, and by by his stripes we are. <coughs> Amen tonight. Amen. How many feel that healing presence here right now? Amen. You feel it? Listen, before we go tonight, it is well with my soul, there it is. If you were looking for the reading, you know, the scheduled reading of the Bible by the end of this year, to have read the entire Bible through, and you didn't get a chance to get one, Brother Gary's going, to, all you have to do is raise your hand. And I've been able to make really duplicates, Brother Gary will uh, give you one. So if you haven't got one of these, please raise your hand so we can give you one. Anybody didn't get it? 